proud to share some of the beginnings of TUBA history with all of you. Fifty years ago, Harvey Phillips created the first international TUBA symposium workshop at Indiana University in May of 1973. The symposium attracted some 300 tubas from all over the world, but more importantly, 67 composers turned out to see what the tuba could do. Harvey later estimated that 150 new works derived from this effort alone. Unfortunately, Harvey took sick and was hospitalized during the symposium. Winston Morris and I stepped in to run the administrative matters and to assist Carol Phillips with the business side of things. Wow, it's quite an education for me, and uh, during the symposium, I was elected president of DUBA. During my time as president, the Constitution was drafted in 1973 by R. Winston Morris and was revised and adopted in 1975. The stated goals of the organization were and are to expand performance and employment opportunities, to enhance the role of our instruments and performers, to explore pedagogical approaches through new teaching resources, to promote activity in new instrument design, to generate new compositions for the tuba and euphonium, to explore new directions and techniques, to establish and maintain appropriate libraries of recorded and printed materials, to encourage tuba euphonium workshops and conferences, to publish a journal. Much of my time during administration was focused on adding new membership, organizing state representatives, planning international memberships, and with publishing the journal. I came up with the TUBA Serpent logo as a way not to favor or offend any of the tuba euphonium manufacturers. I hosted the first National Tuba Euphonium Symposium workshop in May of 1975 at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, on a shoestring budget. The euphonium was added to the scope of the association with a national symposium being edited to include tuba euphonium. My guests were Brian Bowman, Earl Lauder, Arnold Jacobs, Harvey Phillips, Roger Bobo, Floyd Cooley, Rich Madison, Red Lair, Howard Johnson, the Eastman Brass Quintet, Winston Morris and the Tennessee Tech Tuba Ensemble, and David Keene and the North Texas State Tuba Ensemble. During this workshop, we added the students' solo and mock audition competitions. We also included exhibit displays. At that time, we did not have the convenience of having cell phones, computers, or email. Over the years, it has been a blessing to see ITEA expand and include the whole world. We have accomplished so much together, however, there's still much to do. I only wish I could live long enough to see what the next 50 years will bring. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. I'm Toru Mura. Fifty years ago, in 1973, I first attended the TUBA Tuba Symposium held at the Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana. This convention was made possible by the enthusiasm of Harvey Phillips. Ten years later, in 1983, the International Tuba Euphonium Conference, hosted by my dear friend Brian Bowman, was held at the University of Maryland. I participated with a unique group from Japan, the Tokyo Bari Tuba Ensemble, consisting of eight euphoniums and eight tubas. 
we took the long line, many yellow school buses to the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., where we performed pieces called Deep Potomac and others under the direction of Frederick Fennell in a large ensemble of hundreds of colleagues of the long steps of the U.S. Capitol. This international convention was a great success and a great kickstart for ITEC, which continues to this day. I am confident that the International 2 by Phonium Conference 2023 will contribute to the prosperity of all participants, and I send you my heartfelt message. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. It's been my privilege to be at every conference since the very first one in 1973 at Indiana University. Especially, I remember the one whose shirt I am wearing at this time that I was able to host in 1983 at the University of Maryland. This was the first conference which we changed the name from International Tuba uh, Symposium Workshop to the International Tuba Euphonium Conference. It was at that conference that we had uh, many, many different international people and also had the opportunity to receive coverage from all the major networks for our concerts at the Capitol Steps and also at the University of Maryland. And of course, there is one voice that's missing, and that is Harvey Phillips. While he is not with us today, here is the voice of one of his students, and he's also going to talk about the association that he has helped build in Europe. I met Harvey Phillips in the early of 1990s in the Spanish National Jazz Orchestra, where I was a member for four years. He would come to the orchestra stage to give us lessons and he would sit next to me at the orchestra rehearsals and give me advice. Then we would have lines together and we talked to youth about music, musicians, food, life and of course, tuba. At the same time, as we were studying in Spain, some of us were taking lessons with Mel Culberson in France. Having the chance to learn from Mel's teacher, a professor at Indiana University, and one of the boasters of the International Tuba and Euphonium Association was fascinating. I quickly realized that Harvey was much more than a teacher. He had tremendous interpersonal skills, an extraordinary vision for the future of our instruments and a special clairvoyance in understanding the war of music. Harvey could tell us stories about the protagonist of tuba journals that Miguel Moreno, my teacher, had in the classroom of the Madrid Royal Conservatory of Music. In his classes, Harvey would talk to us about music and the composers, about how to play each orchestral passage, about the importance of playing the tuba always in the service of the music, and above all, about how to make people love our instruments. At the end of the lessons, he kept some time to play quartets with us. It was his way to make us think together, to be together, to live together. It struck me that someone so important in the world of music and tuba, the founder of Tuba Christmas, wanted to play with us just for fun. Harvey always had words of encouragement for us, and no one had ever given me a hug like this before. I miss them so much, and I guess you do too. This way of teaching and of seeing the world of music, and the tuba in particular, really influenced a generation of tuba players. Miguel Moreno, who had previously belonged to the Spanish National Jazz Orchestra, founded the Asociación Amigos de la Tuba in the late 80s, together with a group of colleagues, which organized numerous events in its beginnings. In the following years, there was a great emergence of wonderful musicians in Spain, in the case of the tuba and euphonium, due to the excellent work of local teachers and the constant visits to our country of masters such as Mel Corberson, Roger Bobo or Stephen Mead, who showed us 
what we were capable of doing with our talent and our instruments. In 2012, we met at the iTech in Linz a good number of Spanish players. The atmosphere was fantastic and we felt the need to do something to transmit our enthusiasm to the rest of colleagues in Spain. On our return from Linz, Pablo Fernández, also a former member of the Yao Orchestra, Oscar Abella and myself decided to found the Spanish Association of Tubas and Euphoniums, IIT. In a short time, we designed the statutes of the association, formed an excellent working team, developed a strategy and started to work in collaboration with IETA. Today, IIT has 500 members and develops numerous activities around the tuba and euphonium festivals, regional meetings, composition contests, publication of interviews and research articles, commissioning of new works by local composers, etc. We have also organized successful biannual festivals in Barcelona, Valencia, the ITA Super Regional in Madrid, and the recent Congress in Málaga. I feel that I have a very special relationship with Harvey and that he left a huge mark on me as he did on many of you. So his legacy goes far beyond that of an excellent musician and a great teacher. His influence has meant that important composers have written wonderful pieces for us, that music schools have incorporated the tuba and euphonium in their teaching, giving work to numerous professionals, that publishers have been interested in publishing our music, that instrument makers have developed new prototypes with which to improve our performance, and that the image of our instruments has changed for the general public. Harvey was much more than the Paganini of the two. He was the promoter of the associationism in our community, the driving force behind this great family that we must value and preserve as if it were a fragile ecosystem. Definitely the father of the modern tuba. Thank you, Maestro.